Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. Tis the new year, and with the new year, uh, we think about a lot of thoughts. How do we start everything afresh and anew? New beginnings. And so for the occasion, I have compiled a selection of top 10 perfumes for a new beginning, or for new beginnings, because some of us, maybe some of us are lucky and we have that just that one new beginning we need, but then others need several new beginnings. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes there's a lot of parentheses you still have to close before you can kind of really initiate something new. But in general, a breath of fresh air, a new start, a new beginning. These are the top 10 perfumes for a fresh new beginning. First, subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already, push the join button next to the subscription button, become a member today, gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Jacob, all spelled together there as well for extra perks. Thank you to my members and patrons who have already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week on my main channel, so go check me out there and partake in the chats. Now, first perfume. I'm envisioning, even though it is January, but as we're, you know, showcasing this, this video, and uh, it, January always marks the beginning of, well, depends which culture you're in and what you believe in, but in some cultures, in some calendars, January is the beginning of a new year. Okay. Now, obviously, in the Southern Hemisphere, January is uh, summer. <laughs> In the Northern Hemisphere, January is winter, so it can be cold, it can be hot, depending where you are. So I have tried to extrapolate myself from the climate, and instead I am I'm trying to compile a list of fragrances for a mental state of mind, for an emotional state of mind. And yes, those are also influenced by the weather. People who live constantly under gray weather and gray skies might have a different type of tempo than other people who are always in sunny, sunny days. People who live in the mountains have a different vibe than people who live at the seaside, and so on and so forth. So let's try to combine all of that together. There's a little bit for everyone in this list. The first perfume is very much a zesty, bergamotty, futuristic version of a fresh pick-me-up cologne that not only initiates the morning when you wake up, but it also gives me very beautiful vibes for a fresh new start and a fresh new beginning. And that would be Thierry Mugler's Cologne. Look at that. This is still with the, I still have the bottle from with the OG logo of Thierry Mugler before they changed it. And uh, this is a very big bottle. It's a 300 ml spray that you can also unscrew and kind of pour it into smaller bottles. And this thing is just amazing. Um, it is a futuristic vision of a cologne, right? And in general, cologne concentrations for me represent not just cologne concentrations, but also perfumes that have cologne in their name. They represent something clean and fresh. Dare I say almost tabula rasa. Tabula rasa means like a clean slate. You know, when you kind of cancel everything from the surface, you wipe it all clean, and then you have that clean slate to, to start again afresh. That's what this is, basically. Very simple. But there's a twist in the smell. It's future. It's kind of like an alien type of, and I don't mean Teddy Mugler's alien perfume, but I mean like actual UFO type of cologne from a spaceship. And it just gives me hope for the future. It makes me want to fly away and, you know, start really all over again. And this coincidentally, also interesting if you're just starting a new relationship or you're just dating someone, starting to date someone and you feel those fresh butterfly vibes in your stomach. This is kind of for that type of beginning, a beautiful companion, you know, to accompany you on your journey uh, towards a, a new affair. Really, really, really good. 
for as a fresh beginning. So I chose Thierry Mugler's Cologne as the first because it's going to mark our trajectory. We are going to go into that citrusy, lemony, bergamotty accord with twists and turns because there are exceptions. But let's jump into the next one, which is on that same note, but amped up a little bit more intense, more from the past. It's in it's from the 90s, but it's still a beautiful fougere, a uh, beautiful lavender with vanilla and citrusy accords in the opening. And it is, it's just divine for fresh new beginnings, whether that beginning be going to a club to dance and just sweat away all the sorrows and stress of the week and of the day, or whether it be the beginning of the year and you just want to spray on a perfume that makes you feel like you are not tired from what happened last year. But this perfume gives you a, a little bit of a, of, of a kick or of a, of a help to just to kind of shove you in the right direction to feel like you can do this. You know, it's good. It's good. There's a fresh new start in the air. That perfume would be Le Mal by Jean-Paul Gaultier in the Eau de Toilette concentration, which is my favorite. It's the first one that was released in the 90s. My favorite bottle size is the 75 mil because this originally it was released as a 75 mil. Now you can get it as 125 mil, 40 mil, 200 mil. None of them really have the proportions down to that original bottle, like the original 75 mil. So even though the 75 mil doesn't often come in a holiday edition or it doesn't come in like a gift package with other products sometimes it does but usually it's 125 mil i still um prefer to to get the 75 mil bottle it's just the perfect look at that tush it's giving and i mean i mean both sides are giving, but, uh, francis kurjan it was francis was like in his mid-20s when this was his first official big launch perfume and he never beat this one it's kind of sad to say, but Francis, I love other perfumes he, he has done in his career. Not Baccarat Rouge, because that thing is a monstrosity, and I keep smelling it everywhere I go, and I cannot stand it. And on the dupes and all the other perfumes that try to mimic it with, with all those aroma chemicals. Oh, my God. Ah! Nightmare. Let me go back to the good stuff. But he did do something good, and that was Le Mal. Le Mal gets a bad rep nowadays because all the wrong people seem to be wearing it. Hey, forget about who else is wearing it. Let's just focus on the perfume itself. This thing is a masterpiece, and it is so beautifully invigorating. And I think that's the right prospect for this type of futuristic, for the 90s standards, cologne that is sold as an eau de toilette and it has a zest and a punch to it. It has that aftershave lotion vibe about it, but again, fresh, cl clean slate with intensity. And the more this ages, like a fine wine, the more the vanilla amps up and it has a heck of a character. Such a beautiful perfume. Such a beautiful perfume. And Gautier Le Mal, really is unisex to me, perfumes know no gender, but this one just makes me feel like anything is possible. Positive vibes, good vibes, great for a new beginning. Great for a new beginning. It just makes you happy. Makes you feel like, you know what? Yes, let's be optimistic about this new start in this new year. Le Mal, Jean-Paul Gaultier, Eau de Toilette. The next one is a conceptual new beginning. And I want to say, well, unfortunately discontinued, although you can still find stock available somewhere, uh, and um, it, it depends. You're not going to find it on the website of this brand, but you might find it in concept stores, fashion stores that also sell perfume. They might still have some in the back if they're selling this brand. So uh, it's a chlorophyll-filled fragrance so very much beginning of a new year even though with spring in mind because we usually think about spring when we think about new life blooming and popping but 
truth be told, very often in January, sometimes at least in the Northern Hemisphere, this happens, there's a particular type of wind. They call it the south wind that blows through randomly in all that cold and you get a whiff of warmth out of nowhere and then it's gone before you even realized it was there. That wind brings the hope of spring. And the perfume that also delivers that concept to me is uh, Comme des Garçons' Clash, Chlorophyll Gardenia. What a beautiful perfume. It, I mean, it's synthetic. It, it is, it's very, very conceptual. It's not your typical fragrance at all. But what is so beautiful about it, it has this cold, freezing heart. And somehow it manages within that cold heart Inside of this kind of crystalline vibe, there's a flower, there's a gardenia brewing, growing. The seed has sprouted, whatever you call it, and the flower is, is it's coming. And that's that promise of for or of spring. Beautiful. I mean, this is kind of the one that takes the cake. Maybe, maybe even of this entire eh, selection. I want to say this one might be the best of the entire selection. There's one more that might steal the show. We're not there just yet, but this one comes very close. It's very much, very much uh, new beginnings for me. Whenever I, I smell chlorophyll gardenia, the metal tends to a little bit oxidize. Hold on, let me just polish it. It's, it's the perfume that's kind of left on it. Okay. Chlorophyll Gardenia. I mean, this thing is one of the most conceptual fragrances I got. And the title also is super conceptual. Uh, it's an uh, Eau de Parfum, 30 mil. That's the only size they ever sold. Very small, but they're so powerful. One spray is enough. And it's magical. Magical. I mean, it resets your entire clockwork. And it really makes you feel like, okay, let's start something new. Brand new. Amazing. Amazing for a new beginning. The next one is more about nature. New beginning in nature and getting maybe lost in nature, uh, but also respecting nature and believing and knowing that it's going to take you in the right place. You know, trusting nature and whatever or wherever it's going to take you. It's a new beginning while embracing nature and embracing your natural side, the natural side of you. Bois d'Argent by Christian Dior. This uh, is a silver forest, silver woods, silver pine needled woods with resins and honey. Mystical, magical... It's like walking through a silver mist, jumping into the unknown. Because a new beginning, for the most part, a new beginning is not something pre-confectioned and predetermined. You know, a new beginning doesn't necessarily automatically, actually, for the most part, it does not mean that it's going to be safe and easy. Usually, a new beginning is full of uncertainties. It's full of dangers. It's full of risk-taking. But there's a beauty to it because you feel like, yes, the challenges are up ahead, but I can deal with them. I got this. I got this. And that I got this, and I'm ready to jump through that silver mist of uncertainty, and it's kind of almost like a fog, and I don't see what's on the other end of the fog. I'm still going to take that leap of faith because I want change. I want something new. I want to grow. I want that journey. I want that adventure. That's Bois d'Argent. It is that mystical forest. Mystical, mystical forest. Uh, Bois d'Argent. This is the Eau de Parfum. 
I do still have a couple of drops of the Cologne, but uh, it did not age very well. It got quite acidy. What a beautiful perfume. Such a masterpiece. Such a masterpiece. Bois d'Argent is... Um, you want to start something new, you wear Bois d'Argent. Perfect for the new fresh beginning with determination, sophistication, poise, grace, and strength. Never has uncertainty felt so sexy. Oh, there you go, Dior. You're welcome. You got a whole ad for me. Your marketing team should pay me. Hashtag not sponsored, by the way. All of these perfumes have been purchased by myself. And everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged and just my opinion. Thumb up the video if you're enjoying it and subscribe. Number five is number five's counterpart, the masculine counterpart, uh, Chanel's during Coco's life, first and only for or catered to men fragrance, although perfumes know no gender. But anyway, Coco's pour monsieur or pour monsieur eau de toilette. Yeah, this is the one. This is not only great for a fresh new beginning, in the new year, in a relationship, job-wise. But this is also a beautiful, beautiful, fresh new beginning into the morning. Or whenever you wake up. You wake up in the morning, in the afternoon. Whenever you do wake up, uh, this one with its Bur Sicilian elevated, luxurious bergamot. Going into ginger, cardamom, hint of vanilla, labdanum. Oak moss. Such a gorgeous, gorgeous Shebra. First released in 1955, the same year the 255 Chanel bag is released, and also the same year Disneyland opened. Coincidences, coincidences. Coco Chanel thought, you know what, this is it. This is the best. Henri Robert is the nose behind this one. This is the best one. I don't need another one for men. This is the one that will do. It's the counterpart to Chanel number no. five. And this perfume is just divine. I prefer it in the Eau de Toilette as opposed to the Eau de Parfum. The Eau de Parfum is Fougère. The Eau de Toilette is Chypre. So they are quite different. They're, all, they're both beautiful, but Eau de Toilette is where it's at for me personally. And this is a good one to wear also on an empty stomach because some perfumes are not so good to wear when you're really hungry. This one is just so beautifully structured and sophisticated. This is for that beginning when you have a plan. Okay. You are starting new, but you have a very specific plan of what, what's your goal? You have a goal in mind. You don't know how you're going to get to that goal, but you got a clear goal in mind. That's when this perfume is... Perfect. It's it's the right perfume for that set mindset. New beginning with a clear goal in mind. Chanel pour Monsieur Eau de Toilette. What a masterpiece. Period. Purred. Purred. Now the next one is going to be invisible with my green screen, but trust you me, <laughs> I will be lifting up a perfume. We're going to see the lid is probably going to be visible. So the next one is a soft new beginning. It's again a Cologne. Coincidentally, uh, Pour Monsieur, even though it's an eau de toilette, it still has the Cologne vibes in terms of the composition of this sheep. It's like a sheep or Cologne. And coincidentally, the first Bois d'Argent released was a Cologne, just FYI. So you see there's a light motif going on here. And now... This one is a soft new beginning, delicate new beginning. You've been hurt. You've went through some stuff. You've survived. And now you're like the phoenix. You're about to rise from your own ashes and you will move forward. But baby steps. Delicate, gentle baby steps for this new year for this new beginning. The 
hands down for me, best perfume for that. Gentle New Beginning. And I've discovered this perfume coincidentally last January. And it really, really hit that spot for me. And so this January, it's back again. As the perfume for the new beginning. See, it's transparent. <laughs> Told you it's going to be. It is Hermès by the lid. We recognize it. It is the Hermès Cologne Eau du Basilic Pourpre. And you can see a little bit if we kind of reflect the light there, you have the name of it. Purple Basil in a very green bottle. Eau du Basilic Pourpre is Pourpre. Hard to pronounce. It's gentle. It's soft. It's between leafy, powdery, and creamy. Very gentle. It's, it's for that new beginning. Like I said, we are in the ashes and we're trying to, ri to raise ourselves up from the ashes like a phoenix. This is the perfume for that sort of beginning. Delicate, delicate, but uh, refreshing, invigorating. There's almost, but I, but when I say a smidge, I mean nano smidge of camphorous minty quality in here. That gives you a delicate amount of zesty freshness, just to give you that little umph, to elevate you, you know, to give you that little tiny delicate push towards the new beginning. Such a gentle, beautiful, elegant fragrance for a new beginning. Jesus in the chat says, warm, humid mint. So sophisticated and beautiful, beautiful. I adore this perfume and it makes me feel safe. It makes me feel like baby steps are also good. You know, nobody's forcing you to make huge leaps into the new beginning and get yourself working. Don't be a failure. None of that crazy, aggressive talk. This one is very, very gently telling you it's okay. Slowly take your time. It's okay. Beautiful perfume. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. The next one is also from the past, uh, but uh, from the 90s and falls in the cheapy category nowadays. Still way more sophisticated than a lot of really expensive niche fragrances, in my humble opinion. And it has a composition that... Uh, mixes several genres in one. It goes in that kind of fresh cologne. It goes into a floral. It goes into musks, but it goes also into powdery accords. It kind of, at the crossroads of those four genres, you will find olive oil. <laughs> you will find Moschino's Cheap and Chic. It's beautiful abstract silhouette of olive oil. This is not a nose. A lot of people think this is a nose. This is olive oil. It's a chignon. It's the back of her head. She's kind of looking away from you. This is her hair. Of course, she doesn't have a face. It's all kind of black all around. So it's like her hair grew all over her face, but that's the idea. And this is her collar for her dress. And it's a shape in the shape of a heart. Beautiful design bottle. Pierre Dinon designed this one. Euro Italia is still producing it. And yes, let's remember Shelley Duval. I love Shelley Duval so much. She was in Robert Altman's movie, Popeye, with uh, Robin Williams as Popeye. And Shelley Duval was olive oil, the best olive oil ever. Seriously. <laughs> Joyful Remorse says, I love her and she smells so good. There she is, says Audrey. Oh, the cyclamen in here is, with the musks that really does it for me. It's like creamy, but fresh, but flowery, but musky. So basically, how does this ma fit into our vision of new beginnings? Well, it's this uncertainty again. We really don't know. This is the type of beginning where you're not really sure or certain 
is it going to be a bumpy ride? Is uh, is uh, where are we going? Like, do I take the left or the right turn, or do I keep going straight forward? You know, cheap and chic is kind of telling you, well, it's okay. Either direction you take, you will make it through because the perfume also has all those directions within it. Like I said, all those olfactive directions kind of kicking in at the same time and meeting halfway. And olive oil is telling you, that's that's okay. Feel it. What is What does your gut tell you? This new beginning. Is it making your foot, your first step go towards left, right, center, back? Which direction? No matter whichever direction it is, you will conquer. That's cheap and chic. So comforting and soothing, even though it, it has a bite to it. It's a beautiful duality, constant duality that keeps you guessing. But that's the beauty of a new beginning. That kind of keeping you guessing keeps you also on the tip of your toes and it keeps you energetic and energized. Especially important when there's a new beginning ahead of you because it keeps you going forward. It doesn't, you know, make you like stop and, you know, kind of sink into your own feet and like not move anymore out of fear that something negative might happen. This one kind of pushes you to go forward telling you, so don't worry about it. Even if something bad were to happen, you you got this. You got this. This beginning is going to be a good one. The next one is number eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <clears throat> it couldn't be a new beginning selection without, well, for me at least, without a sensual element. And night blooming sensual element um almost a forbidden type of floral component you know the type of new beginning that maybe is connected to love to an affair maybe that affair you know is not quite permitted maybe you are already in a relationship or in a wedding in a mar in a marriage and uh, but uh you're starting something on the side or and it's forbidden morally forbidden right um in some cases maybe even legally but uh you can't help yourself it's stronger than you and dangerous too because well does this mean that the other relationship is over that you've already had is the marriage then over is how is this going to end? Is it going to be a one-time thing? Are you going to keep at it? Dangerous. And yet I'm not telling you anything you don't know already because, I mean, it's a concept as old as time. And so tuberose is the flower that uh, is your accomplice in this little mischievous hormonal new beginning and well the one that uh for me really really represents this new beginning is alexander mcqueen you guys this tuberose well it's comprised of all the night blooming flowers right it does have that jasmine in there the ilang ilang uh the tuberose it's a dark flower and yet it smells so solar and light and uh, this is Dior de Parfum it's aging so it turned from that pinky color when it was brand new to this pissy yellow <laughs> it, it turns darker and darker I guess there's vanilla in there so interesting Coty distribution uh, this continued it didn't sell very well, I guess. And Alexander McQueen as brand is probably not doing very well at the moment either. So we'll go, we'll go. But, uh, and I do prefer the Eau de Parfum to the Extrait. There, there is also a black bottle for the Parfum. But the Eau de Parfum, the tuberose in here, the powdery, soft, slithering, mm, tantalizing, soapy, it's almost like it's a dirty 
thing that's trying to rub itself off with soap. And it's so it has this surface of clean, ag aggressive, almost cheap smelling soap. But underneath it, underneath that soap, you can still smell the other person's skin on you. The other person's essential oils and hormones, they're still on you. And you come back home and uh, that other person's smell is still with you, no matter how much you try to scrub it off. That's how this one smells. It has that soapy, aggressive soapy opening. It's like, why is it trying so hard to be clean? Oh, it has a secret. That's why it's trying so hard to be clean. So that's why it's a new beginning. It's like every time you go back and you sin all over again, then you're trying to wash it off and start all over again. And you try to clean it off, but it, you can't really because the memory remains. The memory of the smell remains. Very interesting perfume for a new beginning, isn't it? Because there's a duality there. It's like not a new beginning because you keep going back to your old love, but then something is over and something new begins. And um, it's a paradox. It's literally a paradox of a fragrance for a new beginning. And I love it. Love this one to bits. And I did stock up on this one once I heard it was discontinued. <sighs> Simple. Don't expect this to be groundbreaking. It's not supposed to be groundbreaking. It's supposed to hide the actual truth. After all, it's a fragrance that is hiding something. So it, it smells inoffensive and clean in the surface when in reality, those clean layers of this superficial aspect of the fragrance kind of allow you to sink deeper into the dirty thoughts. Very fascinating fragrance. Night blooming mystical McQueen, Alexander McQueen, anonymous perfume. IYKYK. The next new beginning is, for those who can afford it, is to take a break from the stresses of, of the last year, whatever you had going on was debilitating. It was a lot to handle, a lot to deal with. And so you're now kind of saying, you know what, let me take a break. From all of this, <clears throat> I'm going to travel somewhere. I'm not going to be home. I'm going to go to a place that is not my home, but a place that is relatively empty, austere, gives me mental space because the visuals of that place give my mind the space to recalibrate tabula rasa for my mind. I'm going to take a break. A new beginning for the person that can allow themselves to just disappear for a couple of months, maybe even, and take La Pausa, which is in Italian, the break. So, of course, Chanel's La Pausa is in this selection, one of the most beautiful iris, orris root compositions out there. Very austere, very dry, very tabula rasa. This perfume, like no other, represents a clean slate. No other perfume is that clean a cut and a slate and a beginning of something else. And La Pausa, which is uh, Coco's uh, villa in the south of France, she named it La Pausa because it was a place to take a break from the chaos and the frenzy and the frantic lifestyles of the people. Winston Churchill would come to visit and would stay at La Pausa. They were dear friends. Even he would like escape all his political life and just stay there and chill for a little bit of time. And so this perfume was dedicated to that house. But Jacques Polge with Christopher Sheldrake envisioned this as a, a perfume that also smells of that cut with the overtly sophisticated lifestyle you're leading, the stress of your life, and beginning something new after you return from your break. So this perfume, in reality, is an anticipation for a new beginning. Like I said, 
This perfume is the clean slate. It's like washing everything away and you need time to do that. To then sit down, take a deep breath, recalibrate, and then you go back to your life and you start anew. But before you start anew, you need the break. And this is the break you need. You need. Uh, this is the break you need. And Finley in the chats, Finley is a poet, one of the our friends of the fashion bunker and the fragrant bunker says, uh, and this poet appreciates it beyond measure. <laughs> Beautiful perfume. Linda says, I sometimes forget Jacob is talking about fragrances. Well, this is the beauty of fragrances to me. Fragrances are characters in a play. They're also my best friends. They're my family. Perfumes depict a scenario. Each one of them has a story to tell. I talk to them. They evolve into bigger things. And all of a sudden, before you know it, a perfume is that key that unlocked that door to that story. And that story is your story. And before you know it, that perfume allowed you to bond with yourself, with the more intimate side of yourself, with somebody else. Perfumes are not just about panty dropping, wearing something inoffensive in the office. It's sad how brand marketing has reduced them to that. In reality, perfumes are much more than that. And I, I am sad for people who haven't discovered the magic of perfumes yet, and they believe that perfumes are just something really expensive that you can have one of and wear that one for the rest of your life only for special occasions. I'm like, I wear perfumes mostly at home alone. And I sniff through at least 30, 40 bottles every day. And I spray 10 of them on throughout the day. It's an intimate, personal thing. It's like reading a book. It's like getting to know yourself more, learning more about yourself. And not every perfume has to be expensive. Also, bear that in mind. And I've showed you some examples today of non-expensive ones too. So we just took a break with La Pausa before we move on to the final fragrance of this selection. Our top 10 perfumes for a new beginning. And this one, more than any other, represents a new beginning. And I, and I do believe that this one does take the cake. I was like for a second questioning if chlorophyll uh, gardenia would be the one. But no, because we got the mother of all beginnings. And what is at the beginning of life, if not a mother? A mother gives birth. It's the ultimate beginning. It's the ultimate initiation. It's the ultimate new. It's birth and it's mother. I got goosebumps. Uh, and that mother energy, soothing, caressing, new beginning, can only be, and if you've followed my channel for a while now, you, you've, you know, because I've reviewed this fragrance, you know what perfume I'm talking about. When I talk about mother, there's one perfume that smells of mother and mother energy. Eternity by Calvin Klein. And I have here a beautiful, rare, discontinued specimen of the Extrait. So this is the Parfum of Eternity, released in the late 80s. And we have a wonderful lady. We have a female perfumer who made it. So look how this thing opens. I always forget how to pronounce her name. Groisman. What's her name? Can somebody help me in the chats? Groisman. I forget her name. And uh, it comes out of this harmonica type of uh, packaging. Sophia Groisman. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And then there it is. Our beautiful, beautiful, I don't know how big this one is, uh, 7 mil. And it, it lays in a bed of satin. Oh, the 80s. Oh, the late 80s. They were magical. This little satin bed it lays in. Wow, it's... 
Oh, man. I mean, oh, the beauty that is eternity with its endless sandy dunes and breezes coming from the ocean and breezes falling from the mountain into the ocean and the sky with the sun and then the clouds and then the rain falling down and evaporating once it's over. It's birth. Over and over and over again. Every time I smell eternity, it's a new beginning. Every time I smell eternity, I feel like we're starting over. We're starting over. Yeah. Finley says, every year contains hope. Always important to have hope. And this is why, to me, this one is, a, is the best one to end the selection with and the most powerful one for a new beginning because that motherly love and that motherly instinct will always guide you in the right direction. Always. And if you are starting something new and you are so lucky that your mom is still around, ask your mom, what does she think about it? She will point you in the right direction. Mothers always do. This is some major mother energy here in eternity. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Oh, so soothing, comforting. You know, this one can get you through a storm and it'll make you feel okay. Beautiful. You want that ultimate Fragrance for a new beginning. Get yourself a vintage eternity by Calvin Klein. You can even get a modern version. They don't do the extrait anymore. They do the eau de parfum. Still beautiful distribution, Coty. A little bit more synthetic than it used to be, but it's still at its core. It still is eternity. It's a little bit less mesmerizing, you know, than it used to be in the 80s and 90s before all the reformulations. But this one also ages pretty well. So if you do hunt down a vintage bottle, chances are it's still going to smell pretty good. So just letting you know that. So this is a, a vintage splash bottle. That even from the lid, and I don't want to open it because I just want to delicately enjoy it. It delivers so much love and joy and hope for this new beginning. I'm wishing everybody the happiest, most successful, filled with love, joy, and health new 2024 year. May it be incredible, fruitful, joyous, and flirtatious, honey. So, that's my omen to you. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, thumb it up. Subscribe to my channel while you're here. And until next time, never forget to never give up on new beginning hopeful love. Love you loads. Take care. Bye.